I don't think it's very difficult to convince even ex-Yu-Gi-Oh players that having every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh unbanned and unlimited is a bad idea for the overall health of the game. Certainly I have seen my fair share of comments from people saying that we're crybabies for playing with any restricted cards, but I think if you're even capable of a single logical thought, it doesn't take very long to figure out that having cards like Pot Agree, Graceful Charity, Upstart Goblin, Chicken Game, Terraforming, etc, etc, all at unlimited status definitely makes for a very uninteractive, unfun game. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it in this video because that's not really what we're focusing on, but I do want to say that the deck list that you see on the screen is pretty much a 99.9% .9 FTK every single time you go first. It's almost unstoppable unless you happen to draw the very specific hand trap, droll, and lockbird. However, I don't want to get accused of straw manning here, so I do want to mention that most of the people suggesting that every single card should go to unlimited are just bad trolls and or people who haven't played the game in like 20 years and sort of think that the format is basically fine they don't quite realize how broken it actually is these are people that didn't really play competitively even when they played Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day so obviously they're not going to really understand how consistent and powerful decks can be if you take every single card and put them to unlimited and I'm sure some people are already saying to themselves but Doug you said this video was going to be about traditional format and that's not traditional format and you're exactly correct in today's video we're going to not be talking talking about if every card was unlimited, we're going to be talking about if every single forbidden card was limited, aka traditional format. Now technically this is officially supported, but if you look at how many traditional format tournaments are actually happening, you'll realize that Konami for the most part has swept this format under the rug. In today's video I'm going to talk about why that's a good thing, because traditional format, while not nearly as broken as if every card was unlimited, is definitely a very unfun format if you look at it from a competitive mindset. Of course, some players might think that if you apply a competitive mindset to any sort of game that it ruins the fun, and I'm also aware that fun is a very subjective word, but I'm someone that plays this game competitively. Whenever I pick up any game, I want to build the best deck possible, or at least a deck that I feel has the highest chance for me personally to be successful with. Everyone finds fun in different aspects of the games that they play. Maybe you have more fun playing casually with your friends, maybe you have more fun going to tournaments and trying your heart out, maybe you're somewhere in the middle. The reason we're talking about this today is because this weekend I'm actually attending a traditional format event. I think the idea of the people going to that event is that it's more of an old school Yu-Gi-Oh feel, but what I'm trying to show in today's video and also after I go to that event and I'll show you guys my profile, is that while it might seem like that would make it more old school, it actually makes the meta much, much worse for a variety of reasons that I'll cover in today's video. And I'm sure more than a few people will say that I'm trying to ruin that traditional format tournament, but here's the problem. I don't know how seriously my opponents will take it. If even just one other person believes that FTK strategies are the way to go, suddenly I'm losing an unwinnable matchup because I played a more casual deck. The main argument that I hear in favor of traditional format is very similar to Syndrome's villain message in The Incredibles. If you didn't see that movie, that's okay, it's not super important, but basically he says that if everyone is super, than no one is. In a vacuum, this makes sense, and this is what I hear people say about traditional format. Well, if everyone has access to Graceful Charity and Pot of Greed and all these banned cards, well then no one's deck is better than another, therefore it's a much more diverse format. But this isn't true. Maybe it's true at a casual level, but as I've talked about over and over again, everything is competitive on a casual sort of mindset. You can play whatever you want. That's one of the advantages of not playing competitively is you get to play whatever you want to play, that's perfectly fine. But if you're going to a tournament and there's prizes on the line, you don't just want to take any random deck. You want to take whatever deck you feel is the best for the metagame. And in the case of traditional format, you're actually narrowed down to just a few options, a lot less than most people would think. For example, option number one is usually just whatever is currently meta in the normal format and then just adding in cards like Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity. I know some of you might be thinking, well, that sounds boring boring, or you might be thinking, but that doesn't make any sense. If my deck gets to use Pot of Green and Graceful Charity, aren't I on the same level as the best decks? But here's the issue. The best decks are already powerful without the need for banned cards, but what a lot of people think is that they should play decks that only are powerful if they draw their one of Pot of Greed or one of Graceful Charity. What ends up happening is that the decks that are at full power currently in the normal Yu-Gi-Oh format only get better when you add those extra 
extra banned cards into those decks. Do you really want to play against Sky Strikers with Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity? Probably not. And the problem is, is that when you're playing sort of a casual strategy that you added in some banned cards to make it a little bit better, they can just play normal Sky Strikers. They don't have to draw their banned cards to beat you, whereas you need to draw your banned cards to even have a chance against them. This is further amplified when you look at decks that have a couple banned cards or a couple limited cards because the decks that are topping the most are already good and likely aren't hit as hard as other decks on the ban list. A perfect example of this is if you played traditional format Skyscrapers versus traditional format windups. Yes, windups now have carrier back and that makes them a lot stronger, but Skyscrapers have most of their cards at three. They're probably going to win the majority of those matches. But that brings us to option two if you want to play a competitive traditional format deck and it's basically just all different FTK variants. Now in some cases things like Danger FTK actually pretty much play the same list that they played back when they were originally topping but in some cases you actually get to add even more consistency cards to decks that used to be very powerful. The deck that I'm thinking of mainly is something like Goki where you Gumblar and you Aqua Dolphin your opponent for all the cards out of their hand. No it is not an FTK in the same way that Exodia or Magical Explosion is because it doesn't kill your opponent in one turn, but it does set up a huge board and get rid of every single card out of your opponent's hand. That deck was already a top deck, but with the added benefit of cards like Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, etc, etc, suddenly it becomes almost unbeatable in terms of consistency and power. In other words, the best decks in traditional format are only going to be whatever the current best decks of the normal Yu-Gi-Oh format are, plus some banned cards that are now limited, or it's an actual FTK like Frog FTK or Danger FTK, or perhaps a pseudo FTK like in the case of Goki. So when you give Goki back those cards and then make them a top deck like they were back when they were actually in the format but then also you give them cards like pot of greed and graceful charity etc etc suddenly you make a very scary version of gokis that we never had to play against in the normal tcg format so then you might be saying well if i'm playing with my friends they're not going to play that deck so why are you complaining and that's true however in today's video we're only talking about traditional format as a competitive format something that i don't think actually works if you want to play casually with your friends, that's perfectly fine. You can make whatever rules you want to. You can play with 80 card decks. You can limit special summoning to once per turn. You can do whatever you want to do in casual duels, but that's not really something to analyze because the rules change from person to person to match to match. So while those games can be fun, for me personally, I want to look at what's the most competitive deck that I can take to this traditional format tournament because my opponents, they're allowed to do the same thing. You have to put everyone in the same ban list for a traditional format tournament and if everyone has access to the all of the limited cards that used to be banned naturally you just want to play whatever has the most consistent deck and if other players are using ftk decks well obviously you're also going to want to use an ftk deck if you want to have any chance at winning so then i'm sure some people will say well what if you make all the limited cards not the banned cards but just the currently limited cards to unlimited and all the banned cards to limited well that sort of falls very close close to the same issues that you have with the first thing that I talked about in this video where you unlimit every card. Yes, you wouldn't have every single banned card unlimited like Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity, but a lot of the limited cards when you put them to unlimited, especially all at the same time in the same format, as long as you also have those banned cards with them now, you create some very powerful decks that most people wouldn't enjoy playing against. I should also mention at the UK National Tournament last summer, they did actually run a traditional format event. I don't know a ton about it because unfortunately they didn't really log a ton of their matches, but we do know that the finals came between a very sort of crazy consistent version of True Dracos with all those new spell cards as well as a bunch of floodgates that are currently banned versus a frog FTK strategy with mass driver and a ton of draw spells like Marae of Greed, Pot of Greed, and other things like that. Overall, while traditional format may have some benefits and may make some new decks, if you're looking at a competitive standpoint for that event if you're arguing for konami to make it an official tournament somewhere you're really just looking at a format mostly full of the current meta but more consistent with more cards that are currently banned or you're looking at a bunch of ftk strategies worth mentioning at that uk nationals the danger monsters were not out yet and yeah actually when i was putting together what was the best traditional format deck and i'll i don't know if i'll actually end up 
playing it because I don't have all the cards, it seemed like the Danger FTK deck with a couple extra cards like Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity really did end up being the most consistent FTK. Of course, if you make every card unlimited, something more like the Magical Explosion deck becomes the best deck, but the Danger FTK deck was already so consistent when you just add a few more cards, it makes it even better for competitive success. Anyway though, hope you guys enjoyed this discussion about traditional format. I've actually wanted to do this video for a long time, but I never really got around to it until I had a traditional format event coming up this weekend. I figured now would be the best time to talk about it because I had to do all this research just for my own deck building purposes anyway. I'll see you guys later though. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.